Find out how I sandwiched and basted this quilt top into this piece, ready to be hand quilted. In the previous two videos about this zebra eel quilt, I show you how I designed the quilt, painted it using various techniques, cut the pieces and assembled them onto the base, and finally applique into this completed quilt top. This week I'm going to show you how I sandwich and baste a quilt like this. Hi everyone, Brent McGee Quilts here, and I'm excited to show you my sandwiching and basting process because I do hoopless hand quilting. And, you know, that means I've got no frame or hoop for the quilt. So it's very important that I have a tight sandwich, a really good thread based to work from to make the quilting, so the back of the quilt and the front of the quilt don't have any puckering. It may happen, but we're going to do our best today to make sure that doesn't happen. And I'm going to show you some of the ways that I do it that I think are a little different from others. And this isn't meant as a tutorial, but instead just to show you what I do and maybe give you some ideas of your own. Okay, so first I'm laying out the completed quilt top and placing that paper template on top. That paper template is the exact size that I want the piece to be. So I'm taking a pencil and a ruler here to mark the edges of where the piece is, where the edges of the piece are in the final product. And now I'm taking scissors and cutting with a one inch approximately seam allowance around that. That gives me something to tuck into the quilt. You'll see what I mean by tucking in here in a second. Okay, so now I've grabbed my batting. It's a Hobbs Tuscany wool, 100% wool. It's my favorite batting to use. The needle when you're hand quilting goes through it really easily. And when it comes straight out of the package, it's got really bad creases and wrinkles. So here I'm just cutting out larger than what I need. And what I did was I spritzed it with just water and put it in the dryer for, I don't know, five minutes on medium heat. And that really releases those big wrinkles out of it. It makes it easier to work with when you're basting, sandwiching it. Okay, so now I'm going to use that paper template once again. I'm gonna put some pins in it here to hold it in place because I'm gonna cut around the exact shape that you see here. Cause I only need enough batting for the size of this quilt. You'll see the way I work. I don't have extra batting hanging out the sides of the piece that I cut away later. I work with the actual size from beginning of the quilting process. And you'll see what I mean coming up here. So I'm cutting away to the exact size of batting that I need based off that paper template I made take the pins out. And so there's my piece of batting that I'm going to use. Now I place the quilt top face down onto my work surface. You'll have to excuse my angles here. I'm still getting used to it. Now I'm just going to work from one corner, starting with my batting. There I'm pointing out the pencil marks that I made earlier that show the edge of the piece. And I'm going to tuck it over and put a pin in there to hold it. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm wrapping the excess seam allowance around the piece of batting. This means when you see the piece from the front, you'll only see one layer of fabric. If I tucked that underneath the batting, you would see that extra seam allowance coming through to the front. So I don't mind you seeing that coming through to the back, but not to the front. Now I'm just gonna go all the way around the piece, putting in these clips, these very convenient plastic clips. If you're a quilter and you haven't, you don't have a set of these or any kind of sewist really, you should have these, these are great. 
Now I'm gonna actually baste down what I've just clipped. So I've got a, a pretty large needle here and some plain white thread. It's actually the thread I use to quilt with. I like using it for these purposes because it doesn't bunch up on me as I work. So now I'm just gonna baste all the way around the edge to hold this uh, in place. And I've made sure that my quilt top, which is face down right now, had no wrinkles in it, no, uh, no, you know, no puckering. It's really flat underneath there. And this first layer of basting around the edges is just to make that finished edge. So as I'm quilting, I don't have any raw edges that I'm working around. And by the time I'm done with the sandwiching, it will basically be the completed quilt what you're gonna see, just not with the quilting yet. So it's very easy to work with, very transportable. I don't have threads flying all over the place. I really like working this way. So around and around we go. You're seeing it in fast motion, but obviously it, it goes much slower in real life. And this is one of the unique ways that I've worked. I haven't seen other quilters work this way. Let me know if you have. So here I'm trimming away some of the excess seam allowance from the inside of the quilt, because when I put the back on and I tuck that excess seam allowance into the quilt, I want that excess to cover up this um, dyed fabric. And you'll see what I mean coming up. So I'm just cutting away extra excess seam allowance that I don't need, about a half an inch. Now I put the backing down and it's really important that the backing stays taut for this process. So I'm laying it down on my table and then I'm gonna use some clamps that I have. I, I'm sorry about the angle, you can't really see it unless you look right down there in the bottom right, but I've clamped the fabric to the table and now I'm using this painter's tape to tape it down and keep it nice and taut for this thread basting process. Now that quilt top that I attached to with the, the batting is back behind that quilt top. I did all that basting of the sides. Now we put that on top of that stretched backing. And I'm just using a plain white backing in the same fabric that I used to dye. It's a Kona cotton. Pulling a nice long length of thread, the actual length of the piece. And now I'm gonna get started on the actual thread basting. When I do my thread basting, I always start this way with just straight basting across the length of the quilt that goes from the bottom of the quilt all the way up to the top. So somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 rows of this kind of binding. I'm gonna do a couple for you right here. And my basting stitches are about a one inch long stitch, so you know, obviously much larger than a quilting stitch. And I'm able to do, I don't know, maybe five or six of these big stitches before I pull the thread through. And then I tie it off with plenty of excess. So I've got extra excess thread on either side. I don't make it the exact length. I actually make it longer and you have little tails dangling out. So now we're doing the second row. And I'm working flat like this because I've got that piece of backing taut 
taped down to the table and it makes this basting process really easy. And effective. So here we go. This is our second row going in. Now I just need to repeat this, I don't know, another 20 times or so. There you can see the completed, what I call my basic base, which just goes all the way across. Now I could stop here, but what I like to do is based in the shapes that I'm going to be quilting. So I don't have to mark my quilt as much. Now I made these fabric templates out of cheap muslin where I made portions of circles, concentric circles, because my design is that I want uh, almost like a bullseye, concentric circles going to the corona of that sun there in the corner. And so I made these fabric templates that I can just lay down onto any piece I'm making and then baste around them. I made wedges and then I just move the wedge from my point that I have marked up there in the corner of the piece with a pin. So I always know exactly where the center of that circle is. And now I use a little smaller wedge to make the next concentric circle. I found that I had made several pieces that included these concentric circles and it just made sense to make a template that I can use over and over again. Again, working my way down, putting the points, the center of those wedges where I put, where I marked on my quilt at the top with a pin. And again, that base is still taped down to the table. So this is serving two functions. One, it's marking my design, really, the, the concentric circles. And two, it's holding the quilt together even more. It's doing an even, since these go a different direction than my basic based, it's giving a lot more stability for my hand quilting that I'll be doing later. This whole process took, I don't know, five or six hours to do all of this. You're seeing it edited in quick here, but it's a whole day process. Um, bigger pieces take longer. So, you know, I put on something I want to watch or a book I wanted to listen to, you know, and just pass the time away and just get in there and do it. This extra time thread basting is really worth it for hand quilting. I haven't done spray basting for hand quilting, but I'm just kind of going off the, the wisdom that it's just easier to pull a needle through something that hasn't had any glue in it. And, it, and like I said, it gives me a chance to put that design in. Okay, so now I've got my thread basting in and I'm cutting away well, first here I'm marking, you'll see. I'm marking one inch seam allowance around. And now I'm gonna cut away so I have one inch seam allowance remaining. And now it's time to tuck under that seam allowance into the quilt. So now this is being tucked in behind the batting and behind that fabric tucked in from the front. So I just take a minute here and make sure my corner is going to be right. Use a handy dandy clip. 
and now continue all the way around the quilt, tucking in that backing. You might be wondering how I'm gonna bind this quilt. Well, I'm using my signature binding that I use for these quilts that I do like this, where I'm actually going to do tiny blanket stitching all the way around the quilt. So it's not a traditional binding, it's more of a, it's almost like a clothing technique of tucking in your uh, raw edges and finishing the seam. It's just what I did with my first one when I didn't know what I was doing. And I don't know, I really like how it turns out, how it looks. I've gotten compliments on it from quilters who have seen it and found it unique, including quilt judges. So it's now become a signature of mine. Here I'm now thread basting in what I just tucked under. So I do end up going around the outside of the quilt two times, one for the top of the quilt and one for the back of the quilt to hold it all together there on the edge. So this thing is really held together. It's not coming apart and it's ready to be quilted anywhere I want. I can take it with me outside when I'm sitting outside with the dogs. I can work on it on the couch when I'm watching TV with my spouse. And I can work at it here on my table. And it's, it's so convenient. So there you have it. I don't know, something like six hours later, And you can see it's pretty good here, a pretty nice solid piece. So it's almost like working on a finished quilt while you're quilting it, which is very satisfying. Let me show you the edge here. There we go. There you can see how it's tucked under, and then that edge will be blanket stitched by the end. So I hope this was enlightening for you and interesting, and I thank you for watching the video here to the end. Here's the final baste. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like the video and subscribe if you haven't yet. And Per the tradition, I've composed a piece of music specifically for the occasion. And I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.